Yes, what is up, everybody? Welcome to What the Fick. What the Fick, man. I'm Spencer Israel here with Ian Cully, head of Fick at All Star Chart. That's fixed income, commodities, and currencies. Today, Ian, we're talking about one portion of that market. We're talking about uh, commodities, specifically energy. Energy is on the mind, yeah? Energy is on the mind. Absolutely. It's been underperforming for quite a while, starting to perk up, and it just never really rolled over. So I, I like the looks of energy and with this rotation uh, going on in the stock market right now and, and seeing some of the more cyclical areas start to start to find some strength. Uh, I, I really like this area, both commodities and stocks. All right. All right. So the question of the day, is it time to invest in energy? It really hasn't been time. Uh, uh, I mean, there have been spurts here and there, but uh, a, a long-term trend. Uh, it's been a long time since we've seen one of those uh, in, in energy. Uh, so that's the question of the day. And if you agree with Ian's take, Ian's thesis, how would you go about doing that? What is the best way to invest in energy right now? That's what we'll talk about. Let's bring up the charts. Uh, what is this? This is a commodity subgroup chart. Break it down for us here, Ian. Right. So the first few slides, I just want to kind of, you know, lay the groundwork, um, the bigger picture, kind of like that top yes. of the top down approach of why I like these stocks, uh, these energy stocks in particular that we're going to get to towards the end of this uh, uh, of the presentation. First, like you say here, this is a commodity subgroups. Uh, this is their performance since the dollar peaked. Uh, September 26th, uh, last fall. And as you can see, energy out of all of the individual commodity subgroups, livestock, the softs, the precious metals, you know, grains and base metals, it's performed the worst. Oh, I know. It's the, it's it's at the bottom of the chart. I, I was it, it is. I was looking at the top and I didn't see it, and it's all the way at the bottom. I know. I yeah, I, you know, I had to I had to expand or pinch. Uh, that Y axis just to get it on there. Oh, that's not a good <laughs> sign. Not a great sign. But when we zoom in, Spencer, we zoom in since uh, since May 1st of this year, tables look like they're turning. Near term, we're seeing energy take a leadership role here within commodities. Yes, livestock still at the top. It's hard to beat those trends in livestock. Um, and it looks like, you know, uh, hogs are, are, are starting to catch a, a bit too. Hopefully we'll, we'll get to that on Friday. Uh, but today it's energy. It's looking good. And what's, what's funny is when, you know, I look at the CPI year of year change and, you know, it, it came in, I believe a little bit lower or was it PPI that came in a little lower than expectations recently? Um, it's all energy, baby. Energy deflation energy deflation but what's so funny is you look at the crb index i mean i don't seem too worried about it they don't they don't seem too worried about this potential deflationary environment and recession that uh appears imminent based on the data um which i think is interesting and then you know energy relative to base metals and the reason i i i put pit these two areas of the commodity space together is because they're the two key pro cyclical areas of the commodity space. There are the two groups that perform the best when interest rates are on the rise. And you know, there's no signs that interest rates are rolling over, at least not yet. And what's what, what's I really want to point out on this chart, and I've shared this chart many times before on the show, is that energy is digging in and starting to catch higher at a logical level where it's where it's dug in numerous times, you know, aside from 2020 when when crude oil traded negative um, over the past decade. So logical level to see energy beginning to dig in and outperform other post cyclical areas, specifically based in industrial metals. I think that's important. Two more charts. We really start to get into it. Commodities relative to bonds. This was this is the most important chart for me heading into the end of 2020, early 2021. I mean, I wrote a an obnoxious post about it on uh, on my blog at the time. 
you know, most important chart, the only chart you needed on your 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 screen. And because this is showing this decade long trend reversal, you know, commodities are beginning to outperform bonds in a serious way for the first time in more than 10 years. Now, since then, they've absolutely ripped, run into a logical level to pause relative to bonds. And look, it's a healthy consolidation to me. So again, not there yet, but I think we could see a possible uh, uh, continuation of this trend. Uh, you know, we'll see what happens here at the back half of the year. And that's, and that's really what I'm focusing on here. I think energy begins to outperform and we begin to see bonds continue to trend higher relative to its alternatives. Bonds and... Stocks. Stocks. Yes. Stocks. So at you know 2020, this peak, this the, the top red arrow here, that's when crude oil traded negative. Mm. Right? Crude oil traded negative. And it has been, you know, the the, the stocks relative to com uh, to commodities has been has been trending lower ever since, you know, running to a logical level to see a, a, a confluence of resistance, if you will a key retracement level from its recent decline off that 2020 high. Um, so wait, hold on. So this and is, the, the, S line. This is yeah. the S and P versus the CRB index, yes. the, the commodity index that, that you use. Um, and this is, what is this chart saying? This chart saying that the S and P has underperformed. It hasn't underperformed um, since the middle of last year. Um, it has been stocks have have un, been underperforming commodities uh, since uh, the spring of 2020. Yes, absolutely. I really That's wouldn't a, have get. I really wouldn't have guessed that, honestly. Yeah, I mean, it, it, um, you know, commodities are sneaky, and and that's the you know, really want to to focus and share with with viewers and readers in the you know in the coming months in the coming years on how to take advantage of continued strength in the commodity space while trading stocks. And we're going to look at some stocks later here um, in just a few minutes. And, but that's really, that's really my goal. Cause a lot of people, most, most investors aren't out there trading natty gas futures. They're not out there, you know, buying uh, gasoline or right. heating oil futures or even crude oil. So I think there's there's just plenty of ways to express our bullish thesis, and we are going to show some of those. I'll share some of those with you uh, here shortly. Here we got energy. You know, this has really been one of the big stories. I mean, how many times have we shared this chart, Spencer? I mean, you're probably, so, yeah. you're probably so, tired so, of seeing this. So, so the, this is the XLE. This is the largest uh, energy, pure energy ETF uh, on the market. If you if you wanted to place a broad, diversified bet on energy, you would do it via the XLE, right? Yep, absolutely. Yep. And what's really interesting is that these energy names, these the biggest energy names, the energy stocks haven't really rolled over, at least not nearly as much as crude oil. Part of that is just the function of the actual assets themselves. Uh, commodities are far more uh, volatile. And we're going to see steep, deeper declines through price uh, than, we're, than, than we're going to witness uh, in, in stocks. Regardless, regardless, still extremely constructive uh, for the bull case to see these energy names hang in there as its underlying commodity, crude oil, has definitely sold off in the past year. I think, you know, both of these digging in and catching higher. I think that's that's the 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 a, a possible that's a possible outcome. I don't I don't think we see LX, XLE inter, in, in just energy stocks in general catching higher if if crude oil doesn't dig in and do the same. Right. So you're saying crude, which which hasn't hasn't played ball really. You're thinking crude oil goes up, it's going to take the whole energy sector with it. Yes, absolutely. Okay. And the thing is, you, you just mentioned crude hasn't really been playing ball, but it's starting to. Crude's starting to play ball. Let's go ahead and run to the crude oil chart first, and then here's crude oil futures. You know, just hanging in right, right below, 
right below those 2018 highs. This is the, the, the peak of the prior, prior cycle. This is when risk assets just peaked globally. And it's just hanging just below that. Not really, not falling over, but hanging in. And what's interesting is that it's it, it's breaking above that key 74 level. And now it's finding support there. So as long as it's above 74, I think we're running back up to 83. And what's interesting is that, yeah, you know, Crude oil peaked back in twenty uh, 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 around seventy six back in twenty eighteen. But if we if we look at the the monthly candlestick chart, that monthly on, uh, based on a monthly close, that high was seventy four. We were seventy four. We're at seventy six as we speak. As we speak, that's 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 excellent. But you know, looking at seventy four, you know that's that's really the level. You know, on a closing ba basis, and I always you know. Closing prices are far more important to me than intraday highs or intraday swings. And it doesn't matter, you know, this is price is fractal. It doesn't really matter what time frame we're looking at. So on a monthly basis, that 74 level is extremely important. And the market is confirming that. So let's see it back above 76. That's extremely bullish for, for energy. Now, quick look at its distillates. Uh, at, at its refined products, you know, crack spread, you know, this is, you know, look Big. at the margins for converting three barrels of crude into two barrels of gasoline and a barrel of heating oil or diesel. And, you know, it's not rolling over. It's not rolling over. It's, it's, it's within a broad range here over the past year, year and a half. Uh, it definitely uh, has come off its, its, its peak from early 2020 to, um, but, you know, it's it's not it's not any really key information here. It looks it looks an awful lot like the individual contracts, right? Here we have uh, gasoline futures holding above its prior cycle high from 2018, and I think if it gets back above 281, 285, you know, maybe we can see it running back up towards 350. You know, and looking, you know, zooming in, looking at the daily chart. I mean, it's a construct constructive reversal pattern here. Heating oil, you know, dug in. It found uh, found support, the shelf of former highs, you know, and it's back above its 2018 peak. It's constructive, trying to break and resolve higher and fight by violating this this uh, you know almost year long down trend line. So constructive action here in the distillates. We want to see heating oil get over. Bot, that would be extremely bullish. See if we get there. Here's looking the thing, at US up. Here's the thing I like about all these, right? Uh, mm -hmm. as, as you got the US up right now, is like we talk like mostly mostly about stocks on the morning show, and it's like it's very easy to see, like look after the fact and see. Oh, you should have bought when it was back down here. The stock has already gone up. Uh, 30, 40 percent in the last month. Where you been, right? Um, what you're not doing that here. You, you, you're saying these, all these charts, all these um indexes, ETFs, stocks, futures, whatever. Uh, they haven't really started to go yet, but I think they're gonna start to go, and that's why I'm interested. And we say all the time, in order for something to start going up. It has to first stop going down, and yes. you're and you're saying that these markets have all stopped going down, and that's why you think they're ready to start going up. And uh, maybe we look back in a month or two or three or four and say, "Oh my gosh, we should have we should have bought energy over the summer." What were we thinking? Well, Ian's doing that thinking right now. So let's go back to that USO chart that you're on, you and uh, yeah. You nailed it, Spencer. You absolutely nailed it. And we're seeing near-term strength right now that that that's that's pointing us in that direction. Like, hey, yeah, it's these these areas of the market, energy has definitely stopped going down. They're starting to take out key pivot highs from earlier this year. And we can start buying on strength from a tactical perspective, uh, looking for longer term structural trend to kick back in higher. So absolutely 100 percent USO. You know, 66 and a quarter, 
you know, that's the, the, the comparable level that we have here for 74 on crude oil futures. You know, it broke above that, retested, holding above that level. As long as above there, I think about it back up towards 72, eventually retesting those, those former highs here around 92. And here's another way to look at it. And here's, and, and here's the thing. It's obviously stopped going down. And, you know, we can buy against these levels, like say 60 here for USO. Now, I generally don't like to buy weakness. I like to wait to see that these that an asset is actually catching higher. I want, I want that confirmation in, in, in the way of price and in the way of momentum. Once I get those data points, then I want to really you know start to get long. I don't want to just jump head first into a market because uh, because you know it stopped going down. Regardless, um, you know you could get long here against sixty. Uh, here's another way, a, a couple of other additional targets up here for USO around 85 and then this 2018 high here. So the, this one looks like, you know, in the short term, at least a downtrend going back to whatever that is, the the, the middle early year of la early part of last year. Right. Um, but to your point, you've got a level to lean on. Right. Fifty nine ninety eight would be your level. Right. Yeah, that absolutely. Would, Absolutely, be, in, in, a, in a tighter, more tactical level, would be that yeah. uh, 66, um, 66 yep. and a quarter. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Or just the the pivot lows from earlier this week or last week. Um, here we go. Switching gears to Natty Gas. Got to talk about Natty Gas. I'm not going to get into a, a bunch of Natty Gas stocks, but I mean, this is what I see when I look at Natty Gas. I mean, this is. It looks like we're bottoming here. You know, and, you know, not getting a buy signal quite yet, not getting a breakout, but we're heading into an, uh, a period of the year where Natty Gas has a tendency to do really well. Now, this alone, the seasonality, is, isn't a buy signal alone, but it's, it's giving me a heads up that, you know, we are heading into a, 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 a bullish, bullish period of the year for Natty Gas. On top of that, we got commercials unwinding a historically large long position. That's more fuel for the fire, more fuel for the rally. Uh, so let's just see if this this unwind continues to take place. If it does, you know, strong hands move markets, Spencer. Big money moves markets. And if they continue to unwind this position, I think we can wait. Go so it, exp explain the bottom pain here of, of, of what that chart is. So the, the red line are the commercials. They're the, 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 they're the, the smart money. Okay. And they were buying hand over fist when Natty gas got down here and started uh, and bottomed out here uh, uh, earlier in the year, earlier this spring. Right. Cause it was cheap. It was on sale. Right. So now they're starting to unwind. They're starting to take profits. Uh, they're, they're, they no longer feel the need to hedge uh, uh, as aggressively. Um, so yeah, and, that, and I think once once they continue to to, to unwind those, those those longs, then wait, wait, wouldn't that be a bearish sign? No, no, not at all. No, not at all. Because in the futures market, you have you know it's a zero sum game. So for every uh, seller, there's a there, 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 there's a buyer and, and, and so forth. So as as they can as they unwind as 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 think of it as as supply kind of comes on, um, I, it'll rip. It'll absolutely rip. Okay. Also good to see Natty Gas futures hit uh, uh, an overbought reading here. But to be clear, natural gas is not your favorite energy it's not your favorite energy market within energy right now right no but I, if we're going to talk energy i didn't want to completely yeah. um okay. leave natty gas out of the picture here and i think looking towards the back half of the year you definitely want to have natty gas on on the radar okay. i think we can have a huge rally in natty gas as of right now you know i don't want to get long but we do have levels 285 286 here for the futures heading back up to five uh, for UNG getting, you know, back above 750 and we can rip back up to 16. All right. We're looking at a double here in UNG, you know, got to get out of this bearish regime though. 
Got to mm-hmm. get out of this bearish regime. Um, but moving on to 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 the stocks. Moving on to to um, to XLE in particular relative to tech. So you pointed out earlier when we were looking at, I believe we were looking at USO. So you know, it looks this, like you know dude, bigger picture. It's it's been in a downtrend. This chart's a killer, man. This chart's right? a killer. So, this is where we've been. This is what, <laughs> you know, and I'll be honest, I really didn't start uh, actively trading the markets until about 2016. Right? I did a lot of reading. I did a lot of research, you know, starting back here in 2011 before I even took the leap. Um, and this is, this is what, this is what I, I know when it comes to energy versus tech. Uh, uh, tech goes tech goes up, energy not energy so much. just goes down. Yeah, you know. Um, I think we're coming out of that. I don't. I don't think th- th- this is no longer where we are. I think we're coming out of it, right? I think we're getting a big reversal here. And what's interesting is that we're reaching a level where it really makes sense for energy to dig in and start to outperform tech. Now, F- tech has been on an absolute roll since the oh, yeah. market bottomed last year. Um, extremely bullish for the overall market. I mean, these names have been getting absolutely slaughtered. Absolutely slaughtered. Which is another point that I want to make later is that we're looking at these tech names, we're looking at these ARC funds that have been you know, down 80, 90 percent. Well, and we're looking <laughs> at these these bearish to bullish reversals. Right. That's that's kind of the play yeah. here. We're looking for these stocks to take out their August pivot highs from last year to get long. Right. And there's a lot of upside potential there. And we look at these these energy names and we look at these energy ETFs. We're not. These aren't reversal consolidations that we're buying breakouts on. They're continuation patterns. And that says a lot. Like energy didn't sell off like tech did. Even though it's been underperforming for the past, let's say, almost a year, I think we're, we're getting ready to, to enter a period where we could very easily, energy could, could take that leadership role again. So, okay. Put it another way, your point is that technology has outperformed energy. We we know this over the last uh, year. Um, yes. But it's not so much due to the fact that energy has been bad so much as it is that technology has, like, it, it, it went up a lot, then it went down a lot, and now it's going up a lot again. So, but but in, in the meantime of all that, of tech, you know, uh, playing zigzag energy has been slowly and steadily forming a trend i think that's what you're saying right yeah it's it's just it's been consolidating and building up energy think of it that way it's been coiling a lot of a lot of names have just been coiling building up energy to to expand and and and, and, and kick off another leg higher and that's what price does. It expands and it contracts. It expands and it contracts. Right. So as energy has been, or excuse me, as tech has been, you know, breaking higher, coming off of these historic lows, expanding, ripping to the upside, energy has been contracting. Um, and, and, and here's the thing. Energy can begin to outperform. We can see this XLE, XLK ratio, you know, start to rip higher. That doesn't mean tech stocks are falling apart. Both of both of these areas of the market can 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 trend together. It, 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 this is just about uh, outperformance. This is just about where money is flowing, where money is being yep. treated best. And I, again, I think we're reaching a level where we could see energy start to to outperform. All right. Do you have a few favorite energy stocks right now? Well, you know, I've got a bunch. I only brought a few with me today. I have okay. a bunch. Um, we're gonna rip through those real quick. You know, here's Chevron. I brought the big boy here. You know, if if you got involved in those Chevron leaps, I believe that was that last year or the year before. I mean, I can't remember when they started buying Chevron leaps, but I know that was an amazing trade. Kudos to you if you were a part of that. I think JC's getting getting long again. Um, you know, back above 184. I think we're heading we're heading towards 250. 
Exxon Mobil. I mean, when it reclaims these 2014 highs around 104, it's almost there. I like it long towards 150. And yeah, we're looking at, you know, 50% of upside here in Exxon Mobil. And what's interesting though, you're looking at XLE, it's kind of, you know, it's not falling apart. It's coiling, but, you know, near term since October of last year, it's kind of just kind of trending, trending lower, trending lower. XES, oil services ETF on the verge of printing new highs. So we're seeing some outperformance relative strength here in XES. And here's that ETF here. If and when it gets above 91.50, I like it long up towards 126.50. This polarity zone here, you know, it broke out and retested that 68.50 level, and it's looking good. And you see, even down the lower pane here, we have a relative comparison uh, to the the Russell 3000, the broader market, and it looks like it's in the process of of completing a bullish reversal against the broader market. I think relative strength here continues and supports uh, a further upside here in XCS. And here's one of the components of that, that ETF, Weatherford International. It's a $5 billion oil services company. And look at this thing. Look at this thing. Absolutely ripping. Mm. You wouldn't have known that there was a one, of, one of the most rip-roaring. I wouldn't say rip-roaring. I guess it's uh, like, well, how would I mean, how would you describe last year's bull market or bear market? Excuse me. Uh, I keep thinking that we're in a new bull market. We've been in a bull market for almost a year now. Bull market um, in, yeah, yeah. Well, again, I guess it depends what. But in you're you're saying in, in like overall. Yeah, I'm just I'm just yeah. saying like looking at this chart. It, you, you, I mean, yeah, since the bottom last summer, right? It's gone from what twenty to seventy six. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, and it's, and it's never stopped really going up. I guess is my point. It's like you know, off of the you know the 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 twenty twenty lows, this thing has been in a strong uptrend. It's been in a really strong uptrend. So what was happening back in October of last year? Uh, Stocks were bottoming, right? The, the major dollar, dollar indexes peaking, were buying. Yeah. If if you if you were along the S and P five hundred, you were bottoming out. Mm -hmm. Right, you you were printing the low, right? A lot of the, the tech names, some had already bottomed, but you know a lot a lot of stocks were continuing to 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 catch lower. Weatherford, WFRD was breaking out, breaking above its 2020 high, right? It was breaking out. This is this this is this is what I'm talking about when we talk about energy. I mean, I, these are the names that are going to continue to outperform. I think over the coming uh, six months. They could, and in the coming years, I think as long as it's above 59, you know, it's in the middle of its range, you know, targeting 95, you know, above there, I don't think 150 is out of the question. Now, moving on to the explorers and producers, you can see here at the bottom pane, we got that relative strength versus the Russell 3000, you know, not showing the same strength on a relative basis versus the broader market that we're seeing in XCS, but this is a constructive constructive looking base here you know i like it long if and when it gets above 180 uh, excuse me 180 towards 336 but more importantly there's some great charts here like permian resources oh, pr this, this is a six this billion oil, dollar oil and gas emp you know you can trade against you know we, we just mentioned this you know there's different ways to play these these uh these names you could trade it against the nine dollar level you know, if, if, if that's your style, I'm going to wait until it breaks above 1250. Right? I want to see, I want to buy on strength above 1250, you know, running back up towards 23. I mean, that's a, that's a double. That's a double. Still in a bullish regime. A lot of these names have never broken down out of their, uh, their, their bullish momentum regimes. Here's Vista Energy. Here's another one. Look at this thing. Was there a bull market or excuse me, a bear market? I, I don't, I, I just, it, uh, I, I, I it, have it, to admit, it, I'm surprised to see energy charts in an uptrend and like going up and to the right. Like, yeah. I, like, like I'll, I'll give you sideways, right? I'll, sure. I'll, I'll, I'll acknowledge that, that there is a lot of energy that like, um, looks, looks good, quote unquote, good because it stopped going down, started going sideways. 
but uh, I have not seen any that have been going up like this. So now this is like the third or fourth one. Now you've shown. Um, I had no idea, honestly, that there are yeah, any of these that exist. This is amazing. And so this is a two billion dollar EMP name out of Mexico. So the way I look at this is you could buy, you know, I'm bullish, bullish Mexican equities. I mean, the ETF is breaking out, um, resolving higher from from yep. from a, a large yes, base. You can buy that ETF, or you can buy Vista Energy. I, mm-hmm. I I like the relative strength here in Vista Energy. Just such a strong looking name. We can trade against this twenty three fifty level initial upside objective around thirty five, secondary upside objective around fifty. Strong bullish regime, and look at the fourteen period or excuse me, fourteen day RSI on that bottom pane. This is what a bull market looks like gets over overbought 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 continues to get overbought again and again and again as it stair steps higher than this bullish momentum regime now moving on to the actual refiners and these are the companies that that, that take the, the 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 oil the raw material and then uh, uh refine it into its distillates uh Three panes here up top. We have that crack spread I shared earlier. You know, you know, sideways, messy, but constructive. You know, Valero, one of the the, the big uh, components of this crack oil refiners ETF here that's on the the bottom pane. You know, still dealing with with overhead supply, just as the oil refiners are still dealing with overhead supply. I think. You know, if, if energy is going to get going, these areas are also going to participate. Here's a chart of Valero, uh, you have potential multi-year, year, uh, year and a half uh, long ascending triangle. If we want to get into to the patterns here, you know, I think break above 150, decides to close above 150 and we're heading up towards 186. Uh, secondary objective, it's out there, but I mean, if energy gets going, these things could really rip back up to towards 280. Uh, I really like this Marathon Petroleum MPC, uh, $50 billion oil refiner. This is a big boy. You know, if and when it takes out, let's call it 135. Size and close above 135. I like it long up near uh, 210. It's getting close to a breakout here. Now the MLPs. You know, this is the Alarium MLP ETF, AMLP, so with, with infrastructure um, when it comes to energy. And this is that sideways. You know, this is that sideways, you know, uh, it's not ripping like uh, Vista or uh, some of the other names we've, we've already looked at. Uh, this is a sideways trend, stuff beneath overhead supply around that 4150 level. If when we get above that, I like AMLP long towards 66. Still hanging in a bullish regime, extremely constructive. And this is one of my favorite names. This is my favorite gas, uh, oil, and midstream right now. Full disclosure, Spencer, I own a bunch of calls. Um, but I like this strength. I like the breakout above 1150. Um, and you know, and if things get going here into the second half, you know, I think you know, maybe AM gets back up towards 750 or 1750 here. Well, it certainly looks like it's broken above that resistance. So that's good yeah, news and- for you. That's good news for you. <laughs> and here's and here's you know kind of what we've been talking about in terms of big base breakout. You know, after the uh, bottoming here in 2020, and then you know big trend. I mean, look, this, I mean, energy just came from so far up into the peaks of 2021. Some some areas peaked in 2022, and this is that that coiling here in AM. That it's 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 yep. you know it's it's contracting, it's building up energy, and now this like is starting to break out. I'm looking for an expansion here in price again, back up towards 1750. Moving on to coal stocks. I'm gonna wrap it up with a few more charts here. Coal B2 energy has been one of our favorites. It's treated us well over the past couple of years. Uh, digging in, finding resistance at a key retracement level. You know, as long as it's above 1850, like it long up towards 30. Above 30, looking looking towards uh, towards that 50 level. Looking towards that 50 level. It's a $3 billion coal stock. Now, it's important to understand we're looking at coal. There's all different you know, grades of coal. I like to keep it simple. You got your thermal coal, and you got your, your coking coal. That's your thermal coal. 
I mean, you have your thermal coal and then you have your coking coal, which is your metallurgical coal, right? So with energy, we're going to focus just on, uh, today we're just focusing on those thermal coal stocks. But when I look at the chart of SLX, I, mean, I don't have a problem buying metallurgical coal stocks either. We'll get to that on another day. Yeah. Um, console energy, another one I really like, uh, getting close towards a breakout above 76 is a $2 billion coal stock company above 76. I think we're running it back up to, to uh, 120. Oh man. All right. So many ideas, so many charts. We just ripped through about 40 charts in about 30 ish minutes, give or take. Uh, if you are also bullish energy, uh, let us know. Drop a comment uh, in, in the chat um, or, or drop a comment in the chat or just comment below the video. That works too if you're not watching this live. Uh, Frank asked, any opinion on ARLP? I'll give you a second to decide if you do or, or don't. Uh, Ian, if you have any questions for us, if you want, uh, if you have a request for Ian uh, on a future show, you want him to look at a specific chart, you can always email us. Uh, also, guys, Ian is producing like all this research, the vast majority of Ian's research uh, is only seen by members of All Star Charts Premium. He does uh, private uh, member conference calls every single week. Uh, and you guys obviously saw his charts here on this show, but he also sends out slide decks and those only get sent out to members of All Star Charts Premium. If you want to become a member, my best piece of advice is to just email us. The email has been scrolling at the bottom of the screen the entire show questions at stockmarketmedia.com and just say like how do i join all-star charts or something like that so we know what the heck you're talking about um you can always call us at the number should be on the screen 323-421-7910 that you can also talk to a person and find out how uh they can get you signed up for all-star charts uh chart of the day email is up there as well or the link is up there as well that's a free chart that Ian helps put together every single day. Um, but again, the vast majority of his research uh, is uh, premium behind a paywall. And if you want to get it, uh, just email us and and we can tell you how. Uh, so Ian, do you have any thoughts on ARLP or no? I do like ARP. Um, you know, looking at it zoomed in, I think tactically you could possibly get long above 20. Um there's a there's a uh, a um a short term short duration potential um reversal pattern uh playing out there again we guess i want to see it get back above 20 above there right. you know maybe get back up to those 2018 highs um around 22 and then i think you know if it if it takes out those highs uh those former highs and we can run it back up towards 33 you know um taking out uh, uh, the the highs from, from August of last year. All right. Jonathan in the chat said it is great to be a member. Uh, I would concur. Uh, thank you very much, Jonathan. All right, Thanks, that's going to be our show for the day. We'll be back on Friday. We're talking grains with the goddess of grain. If you don't know who that is, uh, you're not on grains Twitter, clearly. I can't, I can't uh, wait. I, I'm excited. I'm, re I'm yeah. really excited. All right, we'll be back Friday, 11.30 a.m. Eastern time. Everyone, see you then. See you guys.